Hey, here are five stupid things I've noticed about GMO paranoia. It's only concerned with modern methods of genetic modification. Humans genetically modifying our food is nothing new, but in the present context, a genetically modified organism is defined as an organism that has been genetically altered in a laboratory using modern technology. There's no reason to think we ought to treat food altered in that way any differently than food genetically altered using more conventional methods. But try telling that to the anti-GMO folks. They are convinced that GMOs are dangerous, even though fears over safety are unfounded. Last year, a survey by the Pew Research Center found that a majority of Americans, 57%, considered genetically modified foods unsafe to eat. Much of the anxiety surrounding GMOs is derived from other areas of concern, like overuse of pesticides or standards and practices of corporate agriculture that actually have nothing to do with genetic modification. In the minds of many, GMOs have come to symbolize a reckless and unnatural way of producing food. But that's not really fair. Not only have numerous scientific studies failed to produce any evidence that genetically modified foods are unsafe, GMO foods have been eaten safely by people for years. Maybe that's why, at least in the West, the anti-GMO movement focuses less on banning GMOs and more on promoting misleading campaigns for labeling. Requiring that genetically modified foods be labeled as such is misleading for a few reasons. For one, it implies that genetically modified foods are inherently less safe when there is no evidence that that is true. On the opposite side of that, it also implies that non-GMO foods are somehow safer, which isn't always the case. For instance, if you're someone who's concerned about pesticides, you might be interested to know that many non-GMO foods have much higher levels of pesticide than GMO equivalents because those GMO equivalents have been genetically engineered to repel pests and disease without added chemicals. A GMO label won't tell you that, but you might choose the non-GMO food thinking that you're making the safer choice when in reality, you're doing just the opposite. It encourages anti-science attitudes. Opposition to GMOs isn't based on evidence, but on a vague suspicion of scientific advancement. GMOs are an example of humanity tampering with nature, playing God, and we've all read more than enough science fiction to know that that's just a terrible idea, right? GMOs as a symbol of how our technology has exceeded our humanity fit right in with other anti-scientific ideas like the anti-vaccination movement and conspiracy theories against Big Pharma. The tragedy there is that, like vaccines and pharmaceuticals, genetically modified foods can be a powerful tool that could enable us to improve the lives of billions of people potentially worldwide. Genetically modified crops can be made to withstand insects and disease and undesirable environmental conditions, and they can also be altered to contain additional nutritional value, as was the case with golden rice, a variety of rice which was genetically engineered to produce beta carotene in the hopes of combating vitamin A deficiency, which kills more than half a million children worldwide every year. None of that really matters to anti-GMO protesters who oppose the cultivation of golden rice on the basis that it's genetically modified and genetically modified foods are just bad. The saddest slash funniest part of that is that most of what we eat is genetically modified. As I said at the beginning of this video, GMOs are defined as organisms that have been genetically altered using modern technological methods. But more broadly speaking, virtually every plant or animal consumed by modern humans is the result of some form of genetic modification. Humans have been practicing selective breeding and hybridization for thousands of years, and the result of those practices is genetic modification. Many modern dietary staples, like popular varieties of potatoes, tomatoes, corn, apples, and I could go on, would not exist were it not for human manipulations of the genomes of those organisms. 
Anti-GMO protesters tell us that we should treat organisms genetically modified using techniques developed over the last couple of decades differently than we treat organisms that have been genetically modified using techniques developed and practiced over the last several millennia. But they can't give us a good reason why we should do that, because there isn't one. So instead, they resort to baseless fear-mongering and ominous warnings about dire consequences that never seem to materialize. The more I think about it, the more I realize that it's not GMOs, but the anti-GMO movement that warrants a warning label. Just as a heads up to the unsuspecting. The hardest part is only picking five. Catch you next time. Hey folks, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already, and please consider helping me to make more videos like this by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshives to find out how to become a patron. Thanks for watching.